In this video, we're taking a closer look at Visual Effect Graph in Unity 2019.3 and exploring some of the fundamental ideas and concepts to help you get started designing visual effects inside of Unity. In a previous video, we looked at what Visual Effect Graph is and how to get started using it by rendering your first particle effect. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can manipulate textures in an interesting way to create cool-looking visual effects such as fire, mist, and smoke. We're using the scene included in the Visual Effect Graph Spaceship demo for these videos. The Spaceship demo showcases a large variety of the different effects you can create using Visual Effect Graph. It's available to download using the link below. One of the great things we can do with Visual Effect Graph is to use a texture sheet to create animated particles. A texture sheet, also known as a sprite sheet or texture atlas, is an image that consists of a collection of smaller images. When frequently dealing with small textures, such as the ones we might be using on particles, a texture sheet can be an efficient way to reference multiple images. Only a single texture is referenced, as opposed to multiple references to individual textures. We can use a texture sheet to hold different frames of animation and iterate over the coordinates to create an animated texture. For instance, I've got a texture sheet here for an animated smoke effect. Let's see how we can set up our visual effect graph to iterate over our texture and produce a cool looking smoke effect. Let's start by creating a new visual effect graph called smoke effect. Then let's start by setting up our spawn context. We want the smoke to be continuous, so let's create a constant spawn rate and set it to one for now so we can easily preview our texture later. Next, we'll create an initialize and update context. In our initialize context, we'll create a set lifetime block and set it to five. For our output, Let's render our particles to a quad and add a size over life block and an alpha over life block so that our smoke particles scale and fade over time. Next, let's set up our smoke texture. In our output, let's assign our texture sheet as the main texture. We want to be able to isolate a subtexture rather than have the graph render the entire texture like it's currently doing. So we need to tell Visual Effect Graph that this is a texture atlas. In our output settings, Let's change our UV mode from default to flipbook. We then need to define the size of our texture so that the graph can isolate the texture properly. The smoke texture we're using is formatted as an 8x8 grid, so let's set that as the flipbook size. Now our texture is being scaled appropriately. However, our texture isn't animating. It seems that the visual effect graph is only using the first subtexture on our texture sheet but we want to be able to iterate over all of the textures in our sheet and create an animation. We can change which subtexture Visual Effect Graph displays by changing the texture index. We can do this by using a set text index block in our initialized context. If we increase our spawn rate and adjust this value as our particle spawn, we can see that a different texture gets selected each time a new particle spawns. Now that we know how the texture index works, we need to tell Visual Effect Graph to sequentially increase the texture index over time and move through each frame of our animated smoke. We can do this using the Flipbook Player block. Let's add a Flipbook Player block in our update context and set the frame rate to 16. Now, as each particle is generated, Visual Effect Graph will step through the texture sheet and play the frames of our smoke animation. This is starting to look pretty good. All we need to do now is add some velocity and make it move more like smoke. Let's add a set velocity random block to our initialize context. As the name suggests, this block will randomly generate a velocity for our particle when it spawns. Here we'll set a minimum range of negative 0.1, negative 0.4, negative 0.1, and a maximum range of 0.1, negative 1, 0.1. Now our texture moves downward with a slight trajectory on either side. Let's also just tweak the spawn rate to 20 and set the lifetime down to 1.5. The final thing we need to do is add an orient face camera plane block in our output context. This creates what's known as a billboard effect, which makes our flat textures look three-dimensional from any direction. Now we have a great looking smoke effect. The great thing about visual effect graph is how easily we create different effects from the same graph. Let's create a new set color block on our initialization context and expose it as a property in the inspector. If we now duplicate our smoke effect and change the color to red, we have some red smoke. But if we then bring up the intensity value to about 8 and move the color slightly closer to yellow, 
our smoke now blends with itself and looks like it's fire. With just a few clicks, we've managed to create an entirely different effect. Let's keep going and cool things down a bit by adding a watery mist effect. I've got a number of cloud textures in my project here that I'd like to use as my mist. The problem is that they're all individual image textures, and I'd like to be able to randomly choose one of them each time a particle is generated. So we need to combine these images into a single texture sheet. The image sequencer included in the VFX toolbox is a great way to build texture sheets that are suitable for visual effects. You can follow the link below to download the VFX toolbox from GitHub. Once downloaded, let's install the VFX toolbox from the package manager by selecting the package JSON file from our disk. Once installed, let's open the image sequencer window by choosing window, visual effects, image sequencer, and selecting create image sequence in the window. Then let's drag our textures into the input frame section of the window. In the processors tab, let's choose texture sheet, assemble flipbook. This will stitch the frames together and generate a sample based on the UV settings. We choose the Get button to automatically designate the best fitting ratios for our selected textures. Then we can select the Export Our tab and choose Export as New to save and export our texture. We now have a texture sheet that can be used by our visual effect graph. Let's set up our smoke effect so that our texture can be set in the inspector. Let's add a Texture 2D node and convert it to a property. Let's also create a Vector 2 property so we can set the flipbook size. Now let's duplicate our effect and change the texture to the texture sheet we just created. Let's also update its size to match our texture. This is a good start, but our sprites aren't designed to animate. Let's go into our graph and add a property for our frame rate. Then let's set it to zero in the inspector for our mist to stop it animating. This is looking much better, but it's currently only using a single texture from our sheet. I want to be able to randomly set the texture index when the particle is spawned. In our initialize context, let's add a set text index random block and add a new vector two called text index range and assign the output values to our block. Now we can designate a range for our mist particles to generate from. Hopefully you can see that we can use texture sheets and flipbook animations to create interesting looking visual effects for your games. Using and manipulating textures to simulate things like smoke, fire, mist, and explosions are a great starting point for anyone looking to get started with visual effects. It's worth playing around with different types of textures to see what you can create. Many visual effects are formed from a combination of different effects such as these. And so in an upcoming video, we're going to look at how we can create some more advanced visual effects by combining our different texture effects in Visual Effect Graph. For more information on Visual Effect Graph and to get started crafting cool visual effects for yourself, follow the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.